pray that you understand in this season. Um, we don't do things uh, for a seat. We thank you for watching. We thank you for joining us uh, Zoom in, uh, with Zoom in the Word. This is our last month of, of Zoom in the Word being on Zoom, actually. Um, we will begin live streaming on the first Sunday in February. We will also be um, at our live location, our new, lo our temporary location in Wilmington um, starting the first Sunday in February. So we are excited at what God is doing. Um, and we're gonna get more into that later on um, in the week on, on our Bible study on Thursday night, we'll be discussing the location that God has given uh, Greater Refuge as uh, we meet today with that temporary location and then uh we will also kick off our kingdom build launch back again it's the first season of first fruits uh so we we are expecting you to give above and beyond uh normal that's the word of god your first fruit season you give above and beyond your normal gifts and your normal tithes and so i bless god for um being able to provide for the vision of the house um, because we are not going to let anything stop us there is a, a location there are locations that we are looking at permanently and we're not going to allow god to stop or allow the enemy to stop what god has already predestined for greater refuge temple um you know we are the unorthodox church of wilmington which means that we are the church that does not do things every way everybody else do uh, and that's only because we have crazy enough faith to believe that God will provide and do exactly what he said he would do for this little old church. And so we bless God because uh, there is a vision he has given and there are challenges that we are going to issue uh, not to other churches, but to our city. Um, because I grew up in an era where the people made sure that the city was good. It wasn't the city council people, because if you looked at the last four years, you would be questioning some things. And if you've seen what I've seen even on this week, you'd be questioning some things um, with politics in general, not just city council, but statewide, nationwide uh, politics in, in general. But this is a season, and, and this is why we really don't discuss politics too much in our ministry. But this is a season where God is calling the churches to take lead once again, and then calling the village to raise the village uh-huh uh we go we have to go back to the season where the village was responsible for one another you can't love your you can't hate your neighbor and say you love god and so it's it's time for the village to take possession of the the village once again i'm gonna take these off of that glare it's irking my spirit um but we we have to take possession once again so let's go to the word of god uh, found in Philippians, the fourth chapter, uh, and, and it's going to be the eighth and the ninth verse that says, finally, brethren, whatever is true, and I'm reading from the New American Standard Bible, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, uh, if there is any excellence and if anything worthy of praise, then dwell or think on these things, for these things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me practice these things and the god of peace will be with you we are in the third uh the fourth chapter of the book of philippians uh this is paul's message to the church at philippi amen and y'all know i don't i'm not one of those preachers that's going to give you a strong background on the text that's why we study to show ourselves approved uh, but i try to give you the relevance of the text um so that it relates to the things that you are enduring um and so what the lord uh said to me amen um as i was preparing for today's lesson he said i want the people to understand this at the end of today's lesson you will lack for nothing you will lack for nothing as long as your thoughts are where they should be you will lack for nothing as long as your thoughts are where they should be. The reason why things fail is because we, we have come into a society that does things uh, with an ulterior motive. We, we come into a society nowadays where everything is done uh, with a specific reasoning that is con contrary, amen, to why God allowed you to begin the thing to begin with. Uh, we do things now uh, because everything is about being seen and being heard. You know, we have to brand our names. We have to brand our churches. We have to brand um, our ministries. We have to brand 
what we believe in. And, and these things are not the reason why God allowed us to start things to begin with. Can I, uh, you, you ain't got to say amen. I say amen myself. Uh, we, we come to a part of life um, where everything has to have a significance to it. And, and, and yet while we're introducing ourselves again, because I believe that's what 2020 was about, was about us to sit down and focus on the vision so that when 2021 comes, we are able to really reintroduce who we should have been all along. And so I, I, I just have this, this crazy belief um, in this season uh, that God is doing a particular thing um, in, in the church especially, in the church especially, the church has been quiet for far too long. Yeah, we do food giveaways and yeah, we do clothes giveaways and you know, we, we, we go and help the poor and we go and help the needy, but then we turn a blind eye and a deaf ear uh, to even the violence that's going on in our communities. We turn a blind eye and a deaf ear um, to, to, the, to the number of killings we have each year. We don't uh, go out to the, we go out to the grieving families. We assist them in the middle of, the, while they're planning their funerals uh, for their loved one who has been taken from us. Um, but we don't uh, follow up, amen, with the mayors and the governors and the police departments. We don't have a relationship anymore with the cities um, that we have been called to serve, amen. We, we got homeless people that we see, and yeah, we give them a couple dollars here and there, but what is the church really doing to challenge the nations um, in this season and challenge the communities um, in this season? We put on revival after revival. We put on uh, a feeding after feeding. We put on anniversary after anniversary, but what are these funds really aiming towards uh, when it comes to changing the environment that God has structured us in, uh, we see the we see the pastors with the big benzes. We see, uh, uh, amen, the pastors with the BMWs. We see the pastors, amen, uh, with the nice cars and and the big houses or the nice houses. But what are you doing to change the environment that God has placed you in? After all, we were called uh, with a vision for the demographical area that God has given us. I'm not saying that this is all leaders, amen, but I am saying that the majority of the church are failing today uh, because we forget that when we are called to the environment, we are called for the people that rests in the environment that God has called us to. Now, am I saying that all churches are failing at this task? I'm not saying that all churches are failing, but in the midst of you reaching out to the people the question is, are the people gaining or are you gaining? And so today's message was not designed uh, to bash the house, but it was to give the people a surety that in this season, you will lack for nothing as long as you stick to the vision that God has given you to begin with. Uh, the reason um, I believe that the Lord is speaking to the people is because, number one, we forgot the calling. As a people, we forgot the vision that God had originally given us, and we forgot why God has told us to do such a vision for such a time as this. We forget that God has done everything with a purpose, amen, and with a plan, amen, um, because he is the great I am. So there's nothing that he has not given us um, in this season uh, that he had not already predestined for it to be. So for the Bible declares that whom he predestined them, he also called and whom he called, he justified and whom he justified, he glorified. If God be for us, what can be against us? And so we, we come, we have come to a time where the people of God have understood that they were called, amen, but then they kind of gave up because of the things that come attached to their lives they think are attached to the calling. And so God has uh, began to uh, really speak to me this week and really get me to understand this week that the vision that he has given us in this season um, for 2021, it comes without compromise. It comes without uh, worrying about what about the things that I've done that may not have been pleasing to God. Why? Because whom he 
called, he also justified, which means that when he justified you, amen, he, he, he take the time to wipe your slate clean and for you to have a mind that has been uh, changed, amen, and renewed, amen, in this season to not worry about what the people will think about your past, nor concerned about what they may even think about your present. Uh, but because your eyes are set on things above, God said, I will bring to pass the very vision that I've given you in this season for you to understand that I've called you for such a time as this. I've called you for such a season as this. I've called you. And not only have I called you, but I've called you by name, which means I chose specifically you. Even if you were on your bit of affliction or even if you were on your mind of confusion, I chose such a person as you to fulfill the assignment that is being laid out for you in this hour, it will come to pass. You will not have to worry about how the vision will be sustained. You will not have to worry about the house I promised, how you will purchase it. You will not have to worry about the building I said to go after, how the funds will come. You will not have to worry about how the idea that I gave you, how to put it into pass, because I've already made provision for you in this hour, in this season. It won't take a first quarter anointing. This thing will come to pass this month because I've already given you strategic vision. And all you have to do is go after the vision that I have given you in this season. God is looking for a house that is without spot or wrinkle, but he's looking for people who will get off your behinds and do something. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so we come, we come, we come. Uh, with Paul's vision and Paul's message to the church of Philippi. Let's dig deep into this message. He says, he says, amen, God bless you, uh, whoever just came on board, apostle, God bless you, sir. Uh, he says uh, in this eighth verse of the fourth chapter of Philippians, he starts off with saying, whatsoever things are true and whatsoever things are honorable and whatsoever things are right and whatsoever things are pure, and whatsoever things are lovely, and whatsoever things are of good report or repute, depending on which version you're reading, if there be any excellence, and if anything be worthy of praise, think of think on these things. Uh, your mind will control your destiny in 2021. If your vision is off, if your mind is not on the things that God has given you uh, to go after in this season, you will fail your mission and you will be aborted from your mission because we can no longer give God an excuse on why what he said to do now, we're trying to wait till next year to do. Oh God, my family ain't saved. God, my friends ain't saved. God, they don't agree with me doing this thing. God, the people aren't receptive. God, the city won't help me. God, the banks won't help me. But God said, I never designed a vision with these people to help you. I designed a vision for you to go after these things and for you to begin to take on the assignment that was laid upon your hands. The problem is you're so worried about the negatives that you miss that you miss the authority that God gave you in the beginning when he gave it to you. God did not give you the vision saying that you were going to have people who will push the vision. God said, I gave you the vision because I am that I am and you are that you are. And because I have given you the vision in this season, it's not a vision of delay. It's a vision of now. It's a now vision. It's a vision that I will cause the nations to shift their thoughts and to shift their responsibilities that they will have no other choice but to help you open the doors. But the reason why they haven't done it is because you came to them without the vision being first priority. You came to them asking them off front, can they help you do something that I designed for you to do? Whatsoever things are, are, are honorable. And the thing that I love about God is I love God because he begins to make us a whatsoever. And so because we become a whatsoever and the vision becomes a whatsoever, we become a whomsoever. And so whatsoever things are pure, God will make sure whomsoever that he's given this pure thought to 
God will make sure that he does the very thing that he started. In Jeremiah, did he not say that he will finish the work that he have given you from the beginning? So he's already understood what it would take for the task to be accomplished. The question is, did you hear the assignment in full? Mm. Did you go to God and did you ask God, what is the full assignment for this hour? He has never given a vision halfway. He has always given a vision in completion. And so if God has given a vision in completion, how can we come to the people of God unsure of what the vision is? Mm -hmm. This is for the leaders today. How can we come? Even the people, well, I haven't been called to lead a flock. Did God give you a vision to open a business? Hmm? Did God give you a vision to write a book? Did God give you a vision to begin a, a clothing line? Then you, my friend, are a leader. Why? Because a leader is someone who is called from amongst them to do things that only God can assign to our lives. And so we have to understand that if God has given the vision and it has tightened up on your spirit, man, then that means that he has begun to confirm to you, this is the assignment in this hour. Now the question is, how bad do you want it? Because if you're not going to do what he assigned for you to do, baby, give it up now. Shut the door now. Ain't no sense of wasting God's time. Ain't no even no sense of wasting your own time. If you cannot fulfill the assignment because of your own issues and because of your own self flaws, then get yourself together and get the. That's why we don't go after it. God told some of you years ago: go get the house, go get the place to stay, go get the car, go get this, go get that, and you still ain't did it because you still worried about what you got. And it's not even about your possessions. The the woman, the Millionite woman, I believe it was, all she had left was a little bit of this and a little bit of that, but she baked enough cakes to feed the whole family. What about the woman with the with the with the few pennies that when they were given a seed, she came and she sold just a few pennies she had, and she was blessed mightily because she gave up her last. God said, I'm not looking for people to give unto you. I'm looking for you to give unto people. That's why the vision of God is so far amongst the vision of people because people vision relies on people, but God vision relies on the spirit of God. And not just the spirit of God, but also your belief system in God. Because how can you say you serve him? How can you say you believe in him but you don't believe that the thing he has assigned to your hands will come to pass. Oh, I can't get a house. I got bad credit. I can't get a car because I need a co-signer. I can't do this. I can't do that. You're talking to somebody who had to get his life together, but in the midst of getting it together, God has made provision. And if he has done it for me and I am just the least of them, he will do it for you. How old? You're an apostle. How are you the least of them? Because I've learned that the higher you go, the lower you become. Don't let these people get your head twisted and think that because they're wearing red that they're supposed to be placed on a pedestal. Baby, the higher we go, the lower we should become to humble ourselves enough to understand that this is not about us, but this is about the vision that God has given us to handle. I was listening to the city council meeting and in the city council meeting they took an oath that said that we our whole sole purpose is to fulfill the vision for the people and that's the assignment of the leaders and i said to facebook i challenged facebook what if we as leaders took the same oath i'm trying to figure out how to incorporate it now in the ordination and consecration services that we come to serve god's people i don't care who you are minister elder pastor evangelist, missionary, toilet cleaner, a, a bishop, apostle, chief apostle, archbishop, pontiff or pope. Baby, if you have been called in this season, get your mind off of yourself and get your mind on the needs of the people you have been called to serve. How is it that the whole church is poor, but the pastor's living up in, 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 in glorious acres of land? How is it that the church is struggling, but the pastor's bills are paid by the church? You need to get your mind. Whatsoever things are 
true. What does this have to do with the message? Well, I'll tell you how we can flip this into the message that you will not lack for nothing in this season. And, and I'm done after this. God said, as long as you think on the things that he has given you and the things that are above the minds of the people. These are the things that causes the light to your heart. These are the things that makes you smile in the midnight hour when the tears are still coming down your eyes. These are the things that gives you the drive to get up Monday from to Sunday, Sunday to Saturday. These are the things that makes you think that God has given you something that the people don't understand. These are the things that you may not get support from your family. You may not get support from your friends. You may not even get support from the church, but because God has impregnated you in this hour with this vision and with this thought, these are the things that are pure and these are the things that are true. How? Because these are the things that are of God. And God said in this hour, as long as you focus on him, as long as you concentrate on him, as long as you set your sight to things that are above and not things that are below, God said, I will bring it to pass in this season. Whatsoever things that you have bound on earth, he has bound in heaven. Whatever things you have loosed on earth, he has loosed in heaven. And God in this season is simply looking for a church that is now without an excuse. He's looking for people that are without an excuse in this season. And what he's looking for you to do is go after those things. This is the now time for you to go after the vision God has given you. And this is the now season that God is about to bring that vision to pass. Let's pray. Eternal God, we thank you and we bless you for this word. We thank you for the people, God, that you have sent to join in and to hear out this word. God, we thank you because you told us in this season we will lack for nothing. God, we thank you for the vision that you've even given this, this little old edifice that we call Greater Refuge Temple. God, now as we go into a new season in you, Father, we ask that your will be done. Father, whatever you have in this season, we're ready to do, and we're ready to go forward with it. So God, thank you for confirmation of this word, that whatsoever things are true and pure and of good rapport, we will think of these things. Why? Because we've seen that you have manifested it, it manifested it in us. So God, we thank you in this season. Now, God, have your way with the remainder of the, the calling for this ministry. God, we thank you for those you're already sending to the house. Now, God, we just ask that we be a prepared, pe a prepared people for a prepared season in a prepared place in a prepared time. God, we, we love you and we honor you on today and we bless you. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. Listen, um, we we are still uh, we are still seeking people uh, in this hour. Uh, don't think that our, our time has ended. Um, that we are not looking for people. We are still looking, Amen, for people to help fulfill the vision. Uh, we call them vision uh, vision seekers and vision kingdom workers. Uh, we're looking for you to help if you have a gift of music, uh, silent praise, hospitality, worship or help we are looking for you um in this season to be a blessing um and to come and assist us with the launch that god is giving um in this season uh you can reach out to us greater refuge temple de at gmail.com or greater refuge temple inc.org and simply or and, and just email us or reach out to us and say hey i just want to know how can i help uh the ministry in this hour let us not forget also amen that we are um, still going to be on Zoom uh, this entire month, amen, uh, the month of January. We invite you to worship with us uh, via Zoom. Uh, we will be Zooming um, into the Word um, on Thursday nights at 7.30, and then uh, on Sundays at 12 noon, we present to you Zoom and the Word, which is our worship season here at Greater Refuge Temple, where we are excited to have you a part of this ministry and also because we are in a great season of first fruits and we love um the people that god has given to share with us the vision um we're going to invite at this time amen brother joseph pendleton who will come and share with us how we can sow into the ministry amen um we we honor any gift you give don't think that we are that church that has that hundred dollar line that five hundred dollar line that five thousand dollar line we do believe that some of you have the vision to give um but we do want to invite you, 
amen, in this season to give unto Greater Refuge Temple, amen. And there are two ways to give. Uh, Brother Pendleton is going to come at this time and share with us the ways to give uh, to the ministry, amen. Good afternoon, everyone. So if you would like to give this morning, we have Givelify, which you can find under Greater Refuge Temple, and also on our website, which is www.greaterrefugetempleinc.org. And I would like to read this scripture from 2 Corinthians. And that's chapter nine and it's verse number seven. Each man should give what he have decided in his heart to give, not, reluctant, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. 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 So God already knew what you were going to give. You already knew. Uh, what you were going to give, amen. And so just to recap, uh, we um, we will allow you to give through Givelify, amen. Uh, looking up Greater Refuge Temple on Givelify, or you can go directly to our website, greaterrefugetemple.org, and there you will find uh, the ways to give to Greater Refuge, amen. Um, we are excited. Uh, God is doing a great thing in the church. Um, we have one more meeting this week, amen, on today exactly uh, with our temporary location, amen, um, and then we're also setting up meetings now with our, uh, what will hopefully be our permanent location um, here in the city of Wilmington, and we come really just to give uh, to the city of Wilmington to be a blessing to the vineyard that God has placed us in. We will not be the church that just sits behind four walls. You will probably get sick of seeing us. Um, in this season, amen, we are already gearing up to partner with, um, and I can already announce that we're partnering with um, Academy for Peace, amen, and Dr. J. Macklin on some things. We're partnering with Eunice Lafayette's, uh, Lafayette Gallery, amen, and two of their programs, The Art of Coping or Grieving, amen, and The Art uh, Arts as Prevention, those two programs. We're going to be partnering with her on um, to just kick off a great season um, here in the city of Wilmington. Um, we, we have some revivals uh, coming up, amen. Um, we have some, um, we have uh, the, the uh, Breakthrough Reformation of Churches, our fellowship, amen, has uh, four revivals or four conferences coming this year. Um, and, and then there's just going to be some other things that we do as we prepare ourselves to launch in this great city of Wilmington. We are excited. I am humbled to be home in the city of Wilmington, Delaware. I'm humbled that uh, my friend and my first assistant prelate uh, will be here on this journey with me uh, to help move breakthrough reformation of churches uh, across this nation. Um, and to help introduce our, our mother church, if you will, amen, our headquarters church, Greater Refuge Temple, uh, to the city God has planted us in. Um, this has come with lots of prayer um, and lots of supplication and fasting before the Lord, because truth be told, let me be honest with you, I wanted to say I quit. I wanted to say I quit. But the Lord said to me, he said, how can you quit on something where souls are already assigned to you? How can you give up? And, and so I realized I was being I was being selfish and I was making it about me when all along God was making it about the people. And so I'm excited. We're excited for our, our, our leadership team, um, uh, Brother Joseph Pendleton, uh, who's our chief trustee uh, and our treasurer, um, Prophetess Rita Clark, amen, um, who is um, on our board at this time. And we're waiting to hear what the Lord has in store for her. Evangelist Abbott, who sits on our board, we thank God, amen, and I am going to give him space to uh, give remarks if he wishes. Um, Apostle Javon Bertrand, who sits on the Apostolic Advisory Council, tuned in with us today. I thank God for him, and he knows I dare not let an apostle walk into the house and not give remarks uh, in this season. So, amen, uh, Apostle, if you have remarks. 
Amen. We bless God for all that he is and all that he will do concerning breakthrough and greater refuge temple. Um, I'm excited about what God is doing through Chief Apostle Andre Harris. Amen. Um, and we want to bless God for him and keep him encouraged, keep him lifted, keep him strong. Um, thank you. Amen. Amen. Thanks for tuning in. Amen. We thank God. Amen for him. Um, so at this time, we're going to um, call um, our bishop to see if he has any remarks um, in this seat, in this hour. And if not, we're going to go ahead and we're going to uh, dismiss. Amen. Uh, but we want the people to remember in this season, there's no quitting. There's no excuses. Amen. Uh, you got to press for the vision. Amen. Bishop Moore, any remarks? Amen. All right. Then if there's none from him, amen. I'm excited. We are great. We are grateful that you tuned in on today to Zoom, uh, Zoom and the word. Um, and we really want you guys to be encouraged uh, to give us feedback. Amen. Email us at greaterrefugetemple.org. Reach out to me at face on Facebook, a.l.harris. Um, or even to the church web, uh, to church on Facebook, Greater Refuge Temple. Uh, we are on Facebook also. Um, just look for our our, our seal, Amen. Um, and and really just give us feedback um, because we are that type of church that love to hear what the people uh, feels in this season. And we really want the people to know that we are here for you in the city of Wilmington and abroad. Even if you don't live in Wilmington, but you just need a church. Uh, we are uh, we are ready to receive you, amen, in this hour um, and in this day with this church. We're just a small church with a great vision, um, and we just love to fulfill the promises of God. So let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you for today's word. We thank you, God, for this service and this broadcast. We thank you, God, for everything that you have designed and equipped us to do in this hour. Now, God, as we leave this place, uh, but never your presence. God, we are simply asking that your will be done. Father, we thank you because you allowed us to make it this far. Amen. And, and God, we thank you because you, you've kept us when we couldn't even keep ourselves. Father, we ask that you touch every bereaved family member on today. God, continue to uplift those who are, are, are in the midst of death in this season. God, bless those who are even still grieving a previous loss in this season. God, uh, that, that still is heavy on their heart. God, special prayers, God upon uh, Letitia and Wilson Serrano, God, as they uh, honor their, their grandchildren on today, God, but still remember their son who, who has been taken from here uh, before uh, his time, God. We ask, God, that you continue to give them strength and upkeep them, God, in this season, that this test becomes their testimony to other family members that may be going through similar things and don't know how they're going to withstand uh, the pain, God. Let them be able to be a source in this hour, God, a special blessing, God, upon uh, the family uh, of, 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 of Demetrius, uh, of the artist, I'm sorry, the artist Chase, God, uh, bless him and his family, God, as he prepares to bury his father uh, in this season, God, bless God, overseer, uh, or, or, I'm sorry, pastor, God, Maurice Stevenson, as he prepares to uh, bury his grandfather in this season, God, let your light shine, God, upon these people that even in their darkest hour, God, they can steer Still, fear no evil, God. Let your, your joy come in the midst of their mourning, God. Let your healing come, God, in the midst of their pain. God, we thank you, and we bless you, God, for healing, God, and for blessing this nation, God. Go throughout these hospital walls, God. Continue, God, to go through the hospitals and the homes, God, and bless those who may be impacted, God, with sickness or disease, God. We even cancel the assignment of COVID. Oh, God, the assignment, God, that the enemy has given, God. We, we cancel the assignment of diabetes, God, of cancer, of AIDS, God, of HIV, God. We lose healing amongst this nation in 2021, God, that miracles, signs, and wonders be their portion, God, like never before, that you show yourself to be the strong God, and we'll show ourselves to be your people. God, we just praise and we honor you, God, for what you are about to do, God, and how you are about to do it, God. We thank you for covering us in this season, God, and letting no hurt, harm, or danger come near our bedsides, God, that we are able to wake up with the activity of our limbs, God, and the uh, activity of our mouths, God, that everything that has breath is able to praise you, oh God. So God, we just ask in this season, you continue to be God and be God by yourself. Continue to show yourself to be who you have called yourself 
called us to be, God, that we may give you honor, glory, and praise. But most importantly, God, that the people may praise you when they see us. God, we just ask that you allow us to be the vessel you called us to be, and you allow the visions you've given into our hands to come to pass. God, we will no longer put a delay on the assignment. We'll no longer, God, put a, 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 a moment, God, of hesitation or procrastination on the vision, God. We won't even give an excuse on why we're not doing it, God. We just simply ask that now we, we allow you to toughen up, God, that if we don't do what you'll call to our hands, remove it. <coughs> and we'll still have to be grateful. Oh, God, we just ask that you allow yourself to shine in us and shine on us. And we'll continue to bless and praise your name. In Jesus' name, we pray until next time. Amen. God bless each and every one of you. We thank you for tuning in. Don't forget, on Thursday night, 730, we'll be in the same place on the same channel for our Zoom and to the word Zoom and to the word Bible study. God bless you.